React server components are awesome in the fact they allow us to make our database calls within our components themselves. What I want to look at today is a common pattern that some people fall into, which you definitely shouldn't use as it's not secure. And it's how we handle sort of hiding paid content or something like that behind a check. Now, what I've done here is I've made a layout page here. And let's just say, imagine this some auth DB call here is we're checking the authentication of the user to make sure they paid to view this blog post, for example. And this is all in a layout. So what we're saying in this layout is we're saying redirect them, otherwise just render the children. And then we're just going to render a page.tsx basically with the paid content within it if the user has been authenticated. This should work, right? So let's load up the Next.js page here, what you'll see. And if I click on this page route, which is the one using that layout, it works. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is if we send a GET request to that page. So we go in here and we send a GET request to localhost 3000 paid and hit send we will end up seeing the React server component payload itself, and we'll find that super secret content here, which says subscribe to me. That's what I've hidden in the page behind a paywall. So this is essentially my paid blog post. So you see here, it says subscribe to me. And we can actually get that payload itself by if we go to headers and we add RSC, so React server components and the value one, we can actually get the payload for that page.tsx server component itself. And what you'll see in here is that same text with subscribe to me. And you'll see there that we have bypassed that call to check whether the user has paid. So what we're going to do is look at why this occurs. So what we've got is the layout approach. This is the one that I just used. So we start off as the user. They're going to visit the page here. So they're going to visit the page. And when they visit the page, essentially the server is going to say, hey, you want this page? It's under this layout and page. On the layout, we then check the session token here. And the session token status comes back. So it's going to be paid or not paid. And then we're just going to say, obviously, if the token's valid, show the paid component. And if it's invalid, then we redirect them to a login page. And that's what I showed you as the example. But why didn't this work? And the reason this didn't work is how Next.js and server components themselves work. So we see what the page rendering flow is over here. Now, this looks a bit complex, but let me break it down. Essentially, when the browser, you're going to go and visit the page. It's going to go to Next.js. So this is the server itself. The server is going to say, hey, this page needs this layout and this page. So it's going to go and make the call for them to get the React server component payload. But again, these things can happen separately. It doesn't have to get the layout and then the page. And the reason for this is later on, obviously, if we return the page with the layout and the page, so the nested components, what if we wanted to then go to another page underneath that layout? We don't want to refetch that. So that's how server components work, because when we then request another page under the layout, all it needs to do is go and make that request for that React server component payload and then inject that underneath the layout without ever having to ask for that layout again. So this is just the way server components work and is the reason that you can't hide authentication checks or anything like that underneath your layout.tsx. Now, it's important to note here as well that this isn't a Next.js sort of bug or anything like that. They never recommend that you put these types of checks in the layout.tsx, but it just ends up happening just for the way people sort of think in their head about layouts being sort of a top level middleware for everything else. Everything, it comes to the layout, then the page, so it's rendered like that. But again, that's not how it works. And hopefully this diagram, while it looks a bit complex, hopefully I've explained it a bit why it doesn't work like that. So what can we do? Well, we have another option, which down here, this graph shows, if we visit the page, we can send off to the database to get some text. But what we can do in that database call is check the user's authentication every time we make a request for some data. So then we can return some authenticated text. So we could return that subscribe to me text. Or if they're not authenticated, we could return something like no or an error message. And then we can render that back. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If I go back to my application and we click on paid to you'll see it says login to view this page. Now, if we were authenticated, it would say subscribe to me. Checking out the code for that here in paid to, as I said, we're gonna do get paid content and we're gonna pass through the token each time we need to get some content. So if I change this check here to return true, you would see we would end up getting the subscribe to me text back. Now you may not want to use this way and the way I prefer and the safest way to do all of this is using middleware. Let's go back to our diagram and just see what that flow looks like here. So with the middleware approach, what we're doing is the user is going to visit a page and that's going to go to the server, which is then going to authenticate the user using middleware. Now, the middleware runs before the server or anything returns a page or anything like that. It's taking in the user's request and it's making some changes to it. So the user's request to visit the page is going to our middleware here. Our middleware is then going to check the session token. And if the session token is paid, 
What we can then do in the middleware is say, okay, they're authenticated, just send them back the requested page, or we can rewrite that request to go to the login page. So all the server or the Next.js server sees and the page rendering stuff sees is, hey, we're asking for the login page now as the middleware has gone in and made that transformation and that check for us. So this is the safest way to do it. Now let's have a look at what that looks like. So if we go into here and I do slash middleware, you'll see we get back to the login page. Now, if I go to hopscotch here and make my get request to that slash middleware page, what we'll see is there's actually not a React server component here on the login page. So if I get rid of that and just make the get request like we did before, you'll see we do get some HTML back here, but what you'll notice about this HTML is it says enter your information to log in as it's literally changed the request itself to go and get this login page for us. So it's not leaking any of that paid content back. Now, if you wanna see the code implementation for something like that, in Next.js, you can just have one level of middleware. So it's gonna be in something called middleware.ts. And all I'm doing here is I'm just saying is paid false. Obviously you'd have an auth call for this. And if, it, if they aren't paid, you simply do a new redirect like next response dot redirect like this. And then we can match that up with certain routes. So I've got this matching the slash middleware route. So this only applies to that route and none of the others. So that's the important way to do it. So as I said, this has been three sort of different ways you can handle authentication in a Next.js application when you're doing sort of static paid content. Obviously, if you're pulling in users data, this will be a little different as you're pretty much always checking that the user is authenticated and they are who they say they are when you're doing stuff like dashboards and things like that. This is more important for sort of hidden pages that are paid behind a paywall or something as if you're doing something like Medium or something like a clone of that and making paid blog content. So as I said, that's how we do that Next.js rendering flow. If you want any more information on React server components, I have a whole video breaking down and explaining what they are that I'll leave linked. And if you have any more questions on this problem itself, please do let me know down in the comments. And as always, please subscribe for more content and tips like this.